Welcome back to the channel guys. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe so you don't miss out. This week we are going to be painting French Line Infantry in great coats. If you haven't watched the Battle of Waterloo movie, definitely get on that, it's awesome. Anyway, so for this project, I tried to get as much information as I could about the colours of the great coats. Uh, I've seen some in grey, some in brown. I'm going to be going with the brown coloration. Anyway, so with the miniatures, I spray painted them black and then did a Xenophil um, highlighting, just dry brushing with white. As for the actual painting itself, we're going to start off with the trousers and we're doing that with white. Nice and straightforward. I know sometimes people like to paint the trousers in different colours um, and historically, especially in the um, 100 Days campaign, where troops were kind of thrown together with whatever they could have, there would have been a bit of a patchwork of different colours, uh, but for me, I like uniformity in my troops, so I go for the same colours. So that's white trousers for everyone, and they'll have a uh, sorry, great coats which will be brown. So what I did is I added a little bit of flow aid to the white, just to try and make it into slightly more of a sort of contrast uh, rather than. So next up we're using chocolate brown from model colour and we're going to be doing the rifles or the muskets I guess we should actually say if we're going to be accurate. Nice and quick and easy. I do find it's quite a nice colour the chocolate brown so yeah, uh, top marks. I do find painting on the strip uh, or the sprue is the easiest way because there's plenty of things to hold on to. I know some people um, create or have these sort of holding devices, but I find the sprue works very nicely. And you can get all of your troops, as you can see there, two strips right next door to each other without having to put it down. So, win-win. For the coloration of the great coats themselves, we're using leather brown. For this, I did add a little bit of flow improver, just to turn it slightly more into like a contrast paint. But if you are going to go and do this, just be careful, don't add too much or you'll turn it into a wash and then it'll run all over the whites. So just less is more. If you need to add a little bit extra, you can, but don't go too over the top straight away and possibly do a test model first. But I found what I did, did the job pretty nicely. Uh, so yeah, no, no worries. And with the, the Xenophil um, highlight from before, when it dries, it does give you the, the look you're going for. So next up, it was time to do the flesh. Um, so these guys are pretty, pretty easy to do, actually. Hands and faces. And not much more to say about that. Um, yeah, if you're going to use the Tamiya, just add a little bit of flow improver to it, and that'll stop it from going gunky. Um, Otherwise you've got to constantly put the lid on and off, so just add a little bit of flow improver and it works quite nicely. I put a little drop on my palette and then I could just go backwards and forwards to it whenever I needed to. See, I do enjoy the epic scale miniatures. Um, yeah, they're not too small, which is nice. I mean, 6mm, I enjoy painting. They're very fast and easy to paint, uh, but you just don't get the detail. And then 28s are, well, they're 28, so they're a lot larger and take a lot more doing. So I, I really enjoy this scale. You can get the, the mass and the bulk of the troops, sort of the effect, uh, but also without having to do a huge amount of painting, but you can do just enough so that they look good on the table. Uh, so bayonets and metal parts, I use silver, which is game colour. It's quite bright, uh, but it will dull down when we put the wash on later on. Plus, I often feel when you're doing smaller scales, you actually might want to go for a slightly lighter colour than you ordinarily would, just because of the fact that they are small and you do want them to stand out a little bit more. Baltic uniforms are something I do really like. I like the yellow and the green, so I'm, 
I was quite excited about getting these French troops because I know there's a few in there. Uh, for the black, it's quite literally just uh, game color black. And this does actually come out slightly shiny. I'm not sure why. I don't think it's supposed to, uh, but that's okay for when you're doing leather, I guess. So I used that on the boots and the backpacks. And then I went over the shakos just because the Xenophil had turned them basically into a grey colour. And also the cartouche boxes. I would probably recommend doing the black before the silver, uh, just in case you go over uh, onto any of the bayonets or the uh, barrels. So the dark wash that I used is quite literally uh, Flow Improver, Matte Medium, both from Liquitex, and a drop or two of brown and one drop of black. Next, these just line infantry, so I just gave them the uh, the blue pom uh, blue pom pom. Apart from that, actually, for these ones, I didn't do um, Volta Gears. I did the um, are they like the Grenadier Company, can't remember what they're called in the French army, with the red plume anyway. Maybe it is Grenadiers, not sure. So I left those few men uh, unblued, let's say. Next was time for the straps. And I actually found this was pretty easy to do this time, um, less than on the British. And perhaps having done those, I got into the swing of it a little bit better as well. I don't know, but... Yeah, it went nicely. And then just over the top of the white trousers, because they'd been washed down, it was time just to pick out the uh, the front areas on them. And then for the backpacks themselves. I mean, there it shows a brown backpack. So maybe I got the colour wrong on that. Um, but for some reason, I, just, I went with black. Who knows? There's the red plumes and red epaulets. for the flank company. And next, I just did the, uh, there wouldn't be cat badges, but the, the plates on the shakos, just with a bit of bronze. I know on the miniatures, <coughs> pardon me, some of the, uh, the shakos don't have uh, the plates. But I just put bronze on all of them just because, again, I like uniformity. And then a nice little blob on each of the cartouche boxes or ammo pouches, depending on how you want to call them. Usually I use Russian green, uh, but I actually had some of this, which I've been trying out, and I think it worked quite nicely. So I did the basing using a mixture of Russian green and German camo. And when it dried, it actually dried quite nicely, so not a problem. Although it does sort of gives me uh, my thoughts back to the 90s Warhammer bases where they used to use, what was it, snot green for all of this. Uh, luckily this dries darker than that, so. But on the upside, the slightly lighter green does actually show off the miniatures slightly better, I found, uh, than using the darker green. So, Anyway, that pretty well brings us to the end. Overall, I think they came out pretty nicely, uh, once flocked up and once on the table. Not too hard to do, and pretty easily um, you can get quite a large number on the table pretty quickly. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, if you've got any questions, please let me know and I will see you next time. Thanks, guys.